Hello everyone and welcome back to round two back nine coverage of the 2024 chess.com invitational presented by Discraft. Once again, we are here in Brooksville, Florida playing the Olympus Disc Golf Course. Very challenging track and we just got done with a very difficult front nine that Anthony Barella excelled at. Shooting five under the front nine and really separating himself from the lead card and from the field. Yeah, he really did with some great play, some really good putting, and he just looks in control. Let's see if he can keep that going into the tougher back nine. Oh, it's easier back nine. Oh yeah, pardon me. Yeah, it's easier back nine, but it's still tough. It's just comparison. Yeah, I just feel like the last two holes can really just bite you, and it makes it feel yeah. feel pretty tough. Yeah, 17 and 18 numbers. are big number potentials for sure, but and even 10, it really is 11 through 16 where you got to get a lot of birdies. Yeah. But this hole right here is not an easy hole, certainly. Certainly fits in with the theme of the difficult front nine. Hole 10, 341 feet, very low ceiling, very tight tunnel the whole way. You're not going to see anyone go down this left side. You're going to see everyone try to go down the middle of some sort. Got to miss that stuff on the side of the hill. Once you throw a great shot, so many things to try to beat on your way to the pin birdies are quite rare here on 10. Yeah, to get back to that point, I was talking to Ken Climo. He said, if you're even to one under through the first six, you're doing great. Oh, wonderful. When Kenny says that, you know it's tough. Niklas Antela, four birdies in a row coming here to the 10th, and uh, the birdie streak will come to an end, but he does sit down in the middle of the fairway, and a par should be attainable. Is this going to hold the turn? Ah, and kicks down to the right. It can get very tricky down there, as you can see. A lot of the scruffy stuff in the way. Again, this feels like a shot that Ooh. Joseph is just dialed wow. with that shot. You see what I'm saying? And that little on, hyzer yeah. flip. It somehow manages to just dance around the Charlie Brown Christmas tree, and he's got an open look for the birdie. Uh, that is it. Miss everything, and you are home free, Ricky Wysocki. Beautiful. That's Just how you do Just a mid-range. And look at that scorecard right there, folks. Zero birdies in the last eight holes. He's Just that need birdie to knock on the that down. hole one is the only birdie he has so far this round. Not the start he was looking for. Niklas with a good approach. And Anthony looks like he has a pretty open gap. Ah. And... Looks like there will be a blemish on Anthony Brella's scorecard. Unless he can knock down this huge putt, which he does not. And Ricky takes advantage <laughs> of the bogey from Anthony. How much did that clear the rim by? Not by much. Oh, man, I would have liked to see a replay of that. Here. Just wheeled that one in. A good par save for Niklas. And we are still not quite yet up to Joey's drive. Look at that. Such a good birdie. There's our blemish. That's going to bring him back down to 10. You want to keep going. You <laughs> want to keep going up. <laughs> or down, I yeah, guess. Down and up. Up the leaderboard, get those strokes. Now he's only got a two-stroke lead over Nicholas and Joseph. Yeah, Getting both. tight. I feel like that's just the name of the game, though. You can pull ahead three, four strokes, but the field's going to come back and get you. There's always somebody birdie in a couple holes in a row out there. Some good play from A.J. Carey, who has worked his way up into fourth place as we approach the par four. 11th, 491 feet on the easier side of birdies for the course. Just gotta get a placement shot through the middle. There's a hyzer route. There's also a dead center route off the tee. A good tee shot leaves you a very short uphill, albeit blind approach. Going with the middle gap here, just a mid range, trying to bring that back. He needs to get out Love of that, that stuff though. That's a muddy little area. Very slippery. You have, uh, you can see those tire marks of some service. Yeah, a little service. Right oh, there. Ricky going high up through the top. That is a great shot. And he lands right there on the mulch. I like Fantastic. that. Fantastic. I hadn't even considered that high play. 
the uh, the fairway is much skinnier up at that high spot as you can see that hillside that you have to just crest initially off the tee Nicholas catching some of the cabbage that'll be in a scrambled position hole 11 the third easiest hole on the course and oh that was almost mm. perfect a little too high out of the hand though and he's looking up top and left of the tree that is a good scramble to get to that spot see if it doesn't roll too much mm, don't like to see that turn okay nice curl yeah it's gonna be fine e class got to go high up and around the forehand turnover that'll be a little scramble shot deep c2 should be a layup from there just because it's an elevated pin and it slopes down behind the basket i can't imagine he'd get too aggressive from that range but we'll see yeah, if you watch anderson's footing right there's a little slip forward to, so uh, to see the control from him to get to that spot very good ricky uh, even opting for a standstill from this distance. a1 drive absolutely perfect drive leaking and, though yeah a little leaky but he gets away with it yep so more than likely birdie coming here for Rick. And more than likely making up another stroke here on the leader. Yeah, he's got a long ways to go. Oh, Niklas is even outside C2. has just got to get this over the hill, lay it up close, and kind of left a little meat in the bone. Yeah, you want to get past that rock right there to the left. That's a good indication. Oh, oh, and he's going to yeah. pay the price. Good indication of where... You know, that 30, 30 to 25 foot mark is, is that rock. You get mm -hmm. past that, it's kind of the gimme. And Joey taking advantage there. He has got a birdie to Niklas's bogey. Two stroke swing there in favor of Joey Buckets for second place battle. Well, yeah, that's going to get him to one back of the leader. And Ricky in for birdie. That's what Joey Buckets does, man. He just gets buckets, dude. He's just a bucket getter. He's a bucket getter. He throws straight shots right down the middle of the fairway. Gets those. You think about the easy birdies on this course. There's not a lot of them, but Joey throws that shot very well. Just dead straight, little hyzer flip. And we've got the floral guardian, Kyle Klein, out here rocking almost exclusively Hawaiian shirts these days. Life's a party when you're young and talented. And... He's got the talent part in droves. He's going to have a bullseye birdie here on 11. You saying he doesn't party? He parties on the pickleball court, I'll tell you that. Mm. He likes to do the pickleballs. Anthony Durrell still holding on to first place, even though he is one over on the back nine. Hole 12, par 3, 563 down the hill. Big drop off here. So it's only playing probably about 4, 430, 450, somewhere in there. Pure hyzer, though, if you're going to go sidearm. A lot of power. Big turnover. If you're going with the turnover, you want to push it out left, drift something heavy to the right. Very complicated shot here. I think you're right. I think it, even though it's downhill, and you can get a disc to carry, I think you have to still have the 450 to 460 power to get in the circle for the look for the birdie. This turned over, and yeah. that is gone. Oh, my word. That is out of bounds? No, there's no, no beeline over there. It's just 650 feet, if not more. Oh, boy. Ricky knows right away. He wants to keep it somewhat tight, but this is just... Where is that going to finish? Oh, he is that's deep a, in the woods. That's a nice little kind of filter down to the bottom. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be high on that hill. This is the power you're looking for. This is the line. This looks so good. That's this looks so good. Is, oh, man. <laughs> a, B, hitting the bucket. Oh, A little touch of class right there. It's just no doubt about any part of that shot. And then just the... I mean, come on. Blind 563 and he hits the bucket. Get out of here.
Niklas going for the unwinding backhand turnover. Such a beautiful shot on this hole. Mm. Just so hard to keep that angle perfect and get the drift without getting that little roll at the end. I'm guessing, oh no, this is just doomsday over here. Played with Jared Stoll round one, and he played the hole the nearly the exact same way. 680 foot sidearm to a tomahawk back through the woods, just like that. That's a great effort from Joey to get through everything. Yeah, cleanly. to get a putt for par, that's crazy. Look at he's rewarded with a little, little putt pop through there. That is certainly fortunate lie there for Ricky. If he had been a couple feet in either direction, he might not have a chance at getting through there. Oh, good bid there from Nicholas. He has that uh, flippy disc he threw. I think that's the same one that he threw when he hit that eagle yeah. at the Pro Tour Championships wow, what, a couple of years ago. What a great save What a par. There. That's, that's a... Joey's got like the vibes like he just got off a cruise ship. Like he's, he looks like he's just got off vacation and like, hey, there's a tournament going on. Is there room? Can I play? Oh, I'm in second place. Cool. This sport's fun. Just something about that nonchalant attitude. And let's get another check in here. Kyle Klein, does he have the forehand sauce to get all the way down there? That looks pretty good. Little long. Yeah, but little fitty footer. Yeah, near back edge of C2. Kyle Klein over the top. Good comebacker, though. That's what that's the way you're going to see the whole play typically. Most of the time. Out, out to the left or burn it over like Nicholas Whoa. did. Is Anthony throwing a raptor? No. No, that's his, What was uh, that? Tour Series Venom. Oh, goodness. Thank, thank God. Brought back by popular demand. Z-Lite Plastic from Discraft. Disc that you already know and love, now available in lighter weights. Z-Lite. More distance with less effort. Moving along to hole 13. Second easiest hole on the course. Par four, 468 feet. The objective here is just to try to get to this hillside on the right in any way that you can. That opens up the best straightest lane to this elevated basket. On the shorter side of the par fours, there is a potential to lay down a roller and maybe get through all those last pines and get yourself a look for the eagle, but I don't think anyone's gonna try to get that aggressive. I also think there's potential for somebody, ooh, this needs to hurry. Mm, it's that's okay. And the fact that it's short and right, I think he's going to have yeah. pretty good access to that lane. But like a slow drifting turnover, I yeah. think could get all the way through. Play with Matty o first round, and he oh. nearly did. I mean, it was just a picture-perfect shot that got held up at the very end. And this was a little bit late on the release for Joey... Don't think there's many good opportunities for Birdie in that side of the fairway. Well, he's actually off the fairway. This looks heavy on the hyzer. Does it get past those? No. He's still in the middle, though. Yep. They're going to have some sort of sidearm turnover, probably. I agree. In, in, into the green. And it doesn't really matter about the pace control. You have that big rock wall behind the basket. So if you go past the basket with speed, as Niklas is throwing an absolute gem backhand turnover. Great distance there. But you can blast past the basket and not have to worry about it. This is what Ricky's left with, though. All day right yep. there. That is just a Ricky Wysocki dream shot. The turnover Ooh, with a mid-range type disc. Hit something right there. The ground play kind of cut him, cut him off about five feet. Mm -hmm. Leaves him at circle's edge. That was close to getting the circles edge as well. That was a great poke through the woods. I mean, just catching the last stuff. Anthony's going to go a little steeper on the Anheuser than what Ricky was forced to do, but hits the initial gap and a great result. And let's see if Niklas 
See if his angle is still good, even though he got the distance. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's just basically sitting in the gap already. You could put a little Annie on this and give it a little bit. I think that's probably what he tried right yeah. there. I hit the cage. Almost got the two. Really? Mm-hmm. Nice. Back buddy. there from where Ricky was, too. It was kind of a... Anyways, that's my one pat on the back per tournament that I'll give myself on coverage. Ooh. And Joey getting the Dikembe Mutombo. I have to change the name of that. We're going to call that the Victor Wembanyama. Just, you're not getting over him. He is seven foot four with a nine foot wingspan. Yeah, it's crazy. Ooh, AD right, right side. and in. Ricky with a nice birdie. Yeah, good putt. He was farther than I even thought. Yeah, he had to initially. work for it. And Joey, there's that problem you talked about. Back on hole six, just kind of pulling the putts to the right side a bit. This is an awkward little spot right there, too. Right in the bush. And Nikolas and Joey are going to have their own little two-stroke swing. Whenever you're on a hillside like that, you normally have some sort of rhythm, right, in your putt. A little swing back, a little swing forward. When it's all arm, it makes it super awkward. And it's, mm. You're, like, poking it. You see a lot of people missing those, not him there taking his time and once again we got another kyle klein check-in and that is that picture perfect forehand hyzer line that you're looking for and the forehand turnover and that is just how you play this hole and that's why it is the second easiest hole in the course most players have those two shots in the bag just striping it those little putts always scare me when they sit in the chains for a little bit too long i always think is that going to just like start yeah. rolling and then bounce out? Like what's going to happen here? But usually it doesn't. Anthony back to a four shot lead right that now. That was quick. It just two holes bang, playing bang. so good. 14 under with more birdie holes to come for Anthony. He is just playing some great disc golf as we fly over hole 14 of just a fantastic disc golf hole. Covers a lot of ground at 764 feet. But it's never unfair. I mean, the, the gap off the tee is pretty fair. It's just, even with a good shot, you still have a pretty lengthy 350 to 360 approach into the pin. I heard the rumors of this guy taking an alternate route. Oh. And there you go. They weren't rumors. What is the sport anymore? Um, well, that, I feel like that's just right where you're supposed to land. Yeah, but... It was way cooler that way. Yeah, it is. Whoa. Yeah, you take those trees that you don't have to hit a gap. How much farther is Anthony than Ricky's just like down the middle shot? Maybe like 50 feet, maybe 40 feet farther? I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to Maybe see. not even that Yeah, much. they might just be right next to each other. <laughs> Anthony pull on through the disc 600 feet of power. Uh, and that's the mistake you can't make. Yep, too straight. Too straight into the thicket. Those things will cut you, too. Yeah. Anyone who's played in the south or... I don't know where else sawgrass really exists. It seems like it's just like a coastal thing. But, man, sawgrass sucks. It's like 70 degrees outside. Everyone's in shorts, but you're playing on the course. You kind of want to wear pants because you know that you'll probably get in that sawgrass at least once in the round. Look at this move. Miss the stake. Come on. Yeah, don't... That is so Get steak good. tonight for dinner, but not during the round. A great run from back there. I mean, he's 55 feet for the birdie. Great effort for Nikolas. Oh, I don't like that turn. Unless it's got the skippy stuff. Oh, boy, that's a layup. I mean, I'd, I... Whenever your disc from that spot gets flat or even that little anheuser it almost always goes to pin high which is behind all that stuff you'd like to see this move. yeah you'd like to see that yes a little little hyzer the whole way kind of keeps you from that bush i'm i'm fearing the shortest layup we've ever seen in joe mess history coming up like i don't know how good of a chance he's gonna have to make that putt i could I, be wrong there might be some gaps in there but 
a good effort from Niklas. A little zoom in effect made that putt seem a lot shorter than it was, but that's full on 60 feet. Oh. And that's that's an easy thing to do. Just miss that one a little low, maybe a little right sometimes. Yeah, more. You're 100 percent right. Pulling it from there, trying to get too much power, Ricky. Jeez. I mean, look at that. You know, kind of unintentionally alluded to it. You know, Ricky misses that putt back there on hole seven, and you know, he does something like that. It fires him up. He's starting to get things going here. Mm. So it wasn't a layup, mm. but I mean, there's just that's a horse shot that when you make, you're giving your 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 buddies a letter. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when you when you have a putt like like Joey, it doesn't look like he ever goes to the Anheuser angle. Yeah. And so when right. you get in sticky situations like that, you're forced to do your regular putt. And if it's not there, it makes it that much harder. You'd like to be able to adapt, especially for those situations. 100%, yeah. Anthony still holding on to a four-shot lead with Joey Buckets and Niklas Antela unable to get the birdie. But just like that, Ricky storming up Yeah, that's four a, out of the last that's five. That's the one you don't want. You don't want Ricky storming oh. up. You'd rather have Joey Buckets chilling right there. Yeah. I would I would think that Anthony would trade a two-shot lead over Joey. For a four-shot. Four, yeah, yes. or five, yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he would he'd rather take two over Joey and than four over yeah, Ricky. And that's nothing against Joe, no, Joey. Joey. Well, just, Ricky's one of the best track down players yeah. ever. I mean, he's yeah. one of the best champions in our sports history. Yeah, I'll take two over Joey anywhere. And that's knowing that Joey's still going to come back on me. <laughs> this is heavy on the turn. Yeah, and as long as it, okay, it fights. Look at this. That come is on. fortunate. I was just going to say, if it doesn't go in too deep, he should be able to scramble out of there, but he's actually just in the open fairway now. Anthony Brella, however, he is in a fine spot. He is in a potential situation to give the eagle a bid. Just with his power, I mean, he could go high and try, go down low, whatever he wants. If he even lands at that short tee box, he could, he could give it a go. This is moving way too hard right, and I don't see another... Mm fight out like Ricky got. Not quite. Looks like just a mid-range here for Joey. Is it understable? It's trying. I mean, it's... I just can't get over the fact he just looks like he just got off the all-you-can-eat ceviche buffet. Like, he has just been chilling at the Carnival Cruise for two weeks straight. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll get off of it now, but I just had to say it one more time. Yeah, he's just chilling, man. Look at this. In side second arm. place in the tournament, too, which it also needs to be said. Ooh, that needs to sit. Is that yeah. tucked or is that around the stuff? He, I think he he's likes it. it. Yeah, I mean, the crowd's clapping. They're knowledgeable fans. We'll give them credit. Ooh, stable nuke. That means he's sending. How high can you take this? This has got to. What? <laughs> the camera. If the camera can't even position the height correctly, then that's really high. Like there's, he there is, are limits to how high our camera can go up in the sky. And Anthony goes above that. Jeremy, if you threw it that high. I could chase it down and catch it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm, that's crazy that he's almost been high, man. That's so much power. I like it though. He doesn't need the eagle. Old Anthony Barella's going for eagle there, no matter his position. Uh -huh. Look at the shape from Niklas, what a shot. You know what I'm Fantastic. saying? Fantastic. Oh, yeah. And now he's just like, I want to end up left. Give me another birdie. Mm -hmm. This is far. This is all of 400 up the hill. But there's that Heiser flip. Man, man. that guy's he has got some shape and game. What a throw. Joey Buckets, once again, let's rewind that one. Just easy, man. Yeah, it looks easy. It's not. But it looks it. That'll get him back to nine under. And that was with a little pitch out forehand just to get back into position. Ricky goes backhand, sidearm, sidearm. I like that. Mm -hmm. And he will have another short birdie. And... Look at that. Giving it like a little soft bit. Yeah. Maybe accidentally make it. Oops. It went in for eagle. 
my lead's now six. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh no. Uh, that would have been a great scramble. And I think we missed the par comebacker, unfortunately. Niklas. Tough times in the green. This is not one you want to bogey. This is the easiest hole in the course. It's the easiest hole in the course. And and then since we're mentioning it, let's go ahead and give Aaron Gossage and Garrett Gerthy the shout out for the big bird or for the big eagles. And we gotta go ahead and give Aaron Gossage the shout out for back to back eagles. Wow. Consecutive days on hole 15. Another check-in here with Kyle Klein with just a dream tee shot. I think that's green light go for sure from there. That is such a crush. Man, this kid's good. Does he get it to turn? Yeah. Oh, yes, he does. Ooh. little drift at the end, but he's going to be circle's edge, if not inside, for the eagle. Yeah, you got to understand with that OB to the right, you're going to get that drift at the end. You're throwing something stable enough that's not going to get over to that right side. Can he mail? Yeah, well, I already kind of spoiled it by saying Garrett and Aaron got the Eagles, but <laughs> I didn't realize we were about to show Kyle almost get the Eagle. Apologies for that. Spoiler. But the easiest birdie he's ever had in his life. Good bid, though, from over there. Had to go, like, over a bunch yeah. of that stuff and had the right height. That high sawgrass on the left side really collects a lot of wayward approaches or even great approaches. It just is the natural collection area and people have got to get creative with their runs from over there. A hole 16 is a par 4, 737. You're going to take this left gap on turnover. I've seen all kinds of different things. I've seen neutral stability that just kind of drifts from left to right to the middle of the fairway. I've also seen people go with a very overstable flex shot to get to the landing zone, which was right behind there. The fly zone right there and then you want to throw sidearm hyzer up into this little uh, green area where the basket sits pretty technical hole really like this one mostly about this tee shot get yourself in position this is needs to get to the ground and oh. it does that connect on that little post and stay in bounds either way ricky is in a good position now and anthony just kind of doing everything he can to not throw 500 feet. So just the softest turnover <laughs> he can possibly muster. Joey with a nice control. Is this got enough angle? It looks like it does. Yes, that's great. That is a really nice shot. Sit. Uh, he, he likes that's that. Good. He likes that. Niklas, is that? Yes, it is. It is holding. Is it far enough, though? That I think so. will be a little tricky because he's going to have that pine straw, and it's very slick there, so he's going to have to go with a very slow run-up. Overturned, yeah. Oh, but very overstable. What disc is that? Is that, is that your that's, Raptor? That's that same Venom, I think. Wow, that thing did not look to be going in the right direction, and then all of a sudden it changed his mind midway through flight, and now he's got a putt from the edge of the circle. Niklas trying to flex through the fairway, catching early tree and down. Yeah, a little more turn, and Niklas had it. Ricky is on one of those Ricky runs right now, folks. It's a little edge. short. Yeah. I thought that was the bullseye. It's the circle's edge, so Ricky's going to have to earn it, but he's still playing some good disc golf right now. I don't know what happened there. I think it just stopped maybe right there at the edge. There's some guardian trees. Joey's going to have to earn it. Let's see if Nicholas can find something. Nick lost. Oh, good effort. And a good bounce back after the struggles he just had on 15. So it looks like Joey Buckets is inside the circle. It's Anthony's edge of the circle, and that is a very good putt. Ricky slightly obstructed on the right side. Mm. Doesn't matter. That is eight ball corner pocket. Six of the last seven. Actually, that's eight ball center pocket. I, that's just perfect. 
Joey in on the left side low. That gets him to 10 under par. And Niklas falls a little behind the pace right now with the par. Great birdies for the rest of the card though. Get Ricky's back nine right now. Paul, it's, it's green. It's green. Green means go. Green means go. Green is good. Green would be really good here on 17. So we go into the second and third most difficult holes on the course. Actually starting with the second most difficult hole right here on 17. Blind mid-range or putter over the hill to a blind landing zone. Then from there is a straight shot dog leg right with a low ceiling. That pond that's in the way really becomes a problem. It's so easy to find your disc just a little bit short, or just a little bit too far right. This looks to be what you're trying to do as it's long as it doesn't go too, too long. Oh, he gets a kick Another out. Another little kiss. Wow. Anthony What's going that? left. I think that is also... Oh, that's too far left and long. So that was lower than Ricky's, but Ricky hits the tree, kicks him in. Wow. That one was just straight out of bounds. And that's one of the things that makes this thing so hard. You just... You could play this whole bunch of times and practice to get a whole bunch with a spotter and all, and you'll just never really quite know exactly... How is that one in bounds? That must be a wiggly line over there. <laughs> I have no clue, honestly. And Niklas kicks at the top of the hill. That's going to be safe, but how do you play this for par now? Try to get, get back into position. Just like that. Yeah, that's a pretty good shot. This is what Anthony's left with and just burns it, or does that have enough hover? Well, pretty good. 50 feet for yeah. par. There is OB on that left side. Look how close. See, it does kind of go wiggly right yeah. there. It's a wiggle worm for sure. Not the best, but I don't know if he was trying to get all the way there. I think that might have been a play. I think his angle was really cut off. I don't think he could really get too much more aggressive than that. This needs to go as well. Yeah. And it kind of moved we'll up We'll putt there. off there with uh, Anthony. And really needing to get up and down. All of them. I don't think he would have liked the result had it not caught the foliage. Yeah. I think that was a good result for Niklas in the end. Yeah, that's just a layup. These guys won't be laying it up. Anthony from 50 feet to save par. Just a bit high into the sawgrass behind. Look like it kind of stopped, though. It's short enough. He should be able to just straddle out and knock it down. Can Ricky keep things going? Yeah. Yep. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Wow. I mean... That's a lot of green, man, and that is a such a good putt for the moment. I I don't know if the history of the sport has ever seen runs like we've seen from Macbeth, Wysocki, Calvin, and I think I'd throw Eagle's name in that mix where yeah. it's just they can go like 12 holes in a row and you just don't – It's the sport has never looked easier. Mm -mm. Ricky is currently on seemingly one of those runs right now. One of his favorite words is momentum, and mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever seen him have more at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's, he's, he's riding the wave. And that's a bogey from Anthony. That's going to bring them within two shots. Wow. Wow. I mean, I, I don't even remember what when they were the widest apart this round, but it must have been six, shots, six or think. seven maybe even. Mm -hmm. I mean, at one point it didn't look like it was even close. 
Kyle Klein here on 17. That's pretty low. Does it have enough steam? So good. Wow. It does. And that's how you break this hole apart. Just... Just a classic Jeez, little that was, putter. That was so easy. <laughs> that, that looked so much easier than Ricky's birdie. <laughs> you know, like that was just such a simple shot over the hill and then... Well, that's what Ricky uh, does. He doesn't care where it goes. If it's in bounds, deal, I'm going to throw it from there, try to get up towards that circle thing, and then try, if I'm anywhere around there, I'll probably just do my putt. There's the, the great and players probably make that. It's either skill or will, and he's got both. Yeah. Hole 18, the classic finishing hole. One of the best ones we have in the sport. Par four, 680 feet. You have to get around this corner or throw the putter straight. But if you are trying to get around this corner, trying to land somewhere on that hillside there, from there, it is a pitch up to the green. The, the hard part though is trying to somehow find safe landing off this tee shot. You're going down such an elevated, dramatic elevation yeah. that it, it really is difficult to, to map it out. This looks wide, it needs a lift. Or be short. And it's short. just right there, right where you want to be. Aggressive tee shots can get higher and go farther right, but Ricky, I think he clubbed down to an overstable fairway driver just to get down to the ground. Is this lifting enough? Yeah, that's what you have. To, that's what you're worried about. If you get it to flip up at all, that OB comes in so much of that fairway. This is still a headwind. Not as bad as obviously the day before, but mm -hmm. at times it was. At times there was a pretty big headwind on this hole. Anthony, this is a hole where you do not necessarily care that much about going right. Finding safe landing is paramount. Now that being said, the approach he has in front of him is scary. It's long and it's extremely uphill. This needs to hold on for dear life. It is moving left, and it does. Hang on. Scary shots coming from Niklas and AB. Yeah, a little 420 up the hill probably, I'd say. Maybe a little less with calm conditions. This needs to sit. That left OB comes in quick. Oh, oh that's a nice sit. Very good shot from Niklas from back there. Beautiful distance control. You love a circle's edge putt for birdie on hole 18. Oh, no. This is pulled. This is bad. Oh, does he get away with it? Oh, how the turntables. <laughs> nice Michael Scott reference there. <laughs> After he got the filter in on the last hole off the drive, that was, that was well rewarded, I feel like. Yeah, he earned that one. Ricky. It's just going to... Just Try going to make for two. It. Yeah, just going just, for two. Why not? That's for eight under on the back nine, Germ. The that, tougher of the nines. No, it's the easier of the nines. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, okay. A little reference back to okay, guy, <laughs> guy. I'm with you. Can you believe that? Um, that it's not easy. Only reason I can believe it is we we just saw it. And that's the only reason Ooh, that it seems. Joey with a beautiful shot right there as well. That crested the hill by one raw shrimp. Now, if you're going to get the good breaks, you got to make it. You got to make that putt. Par's fine, though. He does save a shot right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, he shaves two shots from the day before. Yes. Uh, well, look at that birdie. For a one under round, it's good. Not what he wanted today, but it was a pleasure watching him. He had things going on the front nine. The back nine just kind of got him a little bit there at the end. Hmm. And that to save par, that's going to hurt for Joey Buckets. Especially when Ricky Wysocki is just storming his way back onto lead card and solidifying his mm. spot going into Championship Sunday with an eight under back nine. Absolutely wow. fantastic turnaround in that round. I mean, that is just... I mean, that's a shoot a seven under. That is such a good or, round, and that usually requires yeah, a no, great... No, six under. That's a, just a shoot a six under. Really? That's yeah. it? Oh, crazy. What fight. 
Once again, we've got another check-in with Kyle, who is electing to go for the power high sidearm. I like that play a lot. You can throw it as hard as you want if you throw it that high because it just kind of stalls and lands in this spot over here. A little bit inside on that forehand, but he gets around the corner Deal. safely. And yeah. Kyle Klein looking to throw off the accordion back nine. Birdie par, birdie par, birdie, birdie to finish. A good round for Kyle, who gets to 11 under. He will also be on our lead card going into Championship Sunday. Anthony Brella holding on to a one-shot lead. And Joey Buckets with his three-under round, just good enough to yeah. stay on our lead card. Aaron Gossage, four-under on one hole alone. He sits at eight-under, one off the lead card. Gannon Burr, Jesse Nieminen. And Kyle Kiefer coming off a knee injury from last year. Or Kevin Kiefer. Sorry, not Kyle. Kevin Kiefer playing some great disc golf. Niklas, AJ Carey, Matt Oram, and Casey White on our third card. It's tight going into the final round. Get used to that moving forward in the history of the sport. Yeah, it's going to be tight. Going to take i'm gonna say you're gonna need to break the course record to win this tournament tomorrow break is, the course record yeah which is a seven under i okay. think if you, if you can get to eight nine under you've got a good chance with ricky i mean the way he played that back nine Whew. when you see somebody in the field do something it seems like people follow and they're like oh it's doable okay i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah i i can get they six, set seven. the stage exactly yeah so, this, the, the people are figuring out the course now yep. if the conditions remain similar and going into the final round i think you're right i think yep. we could see maybe even a double digit that would be pretty remarkable yeah. but it's going to be an exciting conclusion to this tournament thanks for watching and stay tuned for round three of the 2024 chess.com invitational presented by discraft we'll see you tomorrow